And welcome back to Open Your Eyes, a lovely Wednesday morning, and we're now moving into our second segment for the morning. And this one is actually, we're featuring an entrepreneur here. We're talking here, Blue Belize Pastry Chef, and uh, Einar Marin is in with us, the chef at Blue Belize. Einar, good morning, sir. Uh, morning, John. Yeah. Morning, Martin. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I try to uh, make sure that I have your name locked up in my mind now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk uh, pastry. But before we do that, let's talk about Blue Belize. What is Blue Belize? Where is it located? Tell us about it. Um, Blue Belize is just a small business that me, that myself and my little sister run. Wow. Um, we're located in Belize City. Um, make cakes something different than what Belizeans are accustomed yeah. to. You know? Mm -hmm. um, we have been in Cancun, Mexico, um, six months uh, internship, and then I went to Barcelona, Spain wow. for five months, and I was at one of the best pastry boutique um, locations in the world at Oriol Balaguer, and I'm grateful for everything I've learned from them. Um, it's been a quite an experience, and that's what I look to bring back to Belize. So. Um, to up the standard of the PSG game in Belize, you know. Absolutely. And I know, you know, we haven't forgotten you. You're an award-winning pastry chef. Uh, and so it means that the the level of craft that you can be able to create out of uh, uh, sugary items, I'm, I'm excited to, to just hear about what you've been making. Um, so take us back to the idea of uh, using your creativity to create unique desserts. Uh, where does this come from and how do you find things that inspire you to make them? Well, honestly, um, usually I just have my notebook with me and I begin sketching ideas. I begin thinking about what pairs good with what, you know, that's what we learn at school, trying to pay, see what pairs good. Yeah. Uh, besides that, I'm, I'm constantly reading recipes, you know, on Instagram, looking at stuff like, like trying to get inspiration from that, but also incorporating Belizean um, ingredients. I think that's what um, Chef Sean Quillen, yeah, uh, one of my good friends, you know, um, he always is pushing that Belizean aspect into everything. So that's when when I first wanted to pastry, I was like, okay, let me try to do um, French recipes, you know. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, I'm like, how will I get those ingredients, you know? How how will I get that source here? So I began changing my mentality. I'm like, maybe I could, instead of doing that, maybe try the similar te techniques, but using local ingredients instead of thinking yeah. of what those guys are doing over there, you know, changing it up a bit, uh, adjusting it to what we have to offer here in Belize. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So you you've... <laughs> done uh, some really interesting stuff uh, you're on instagram that's how people can find you but uh so you take what we would normally have we'd make it as desserts at home and you elevate it to a different level i i saw your tres leches for example i would not see that in a restaurant and think that's tres leches <laughs> at all and i'm sure it's delicious tell us about you know the flavors in belize that inspire you and things that you've been excited to work with since you're home um, well, like like you said, the tres leches is something that's um, traditional, you know, in Belize. Yeah. Um, growing up, my grandmother used to make that, my aunts, you know. It's something that you see, right? So what I wanted to do with that was elevate it, like, say, how can I make this look um, gourmet, mm -hmm. but without sacrificing the taste of it, you know. So um, with the tres leches, what I did, um, actually one uh, taste of Belize with that two years ago, with that same recipe. But I added more stuff. Um, I have a pastry cream in there. I have a tres leches pastry cream. I have the tres leches mousse. I have the sponge cake with tres leches. And then all around, I have the white chocolate borders. And then I have the spherifications on top um, that you break on top of the cake and it's playful, you know. It's something yeah. that keeps my clients, you know, happy. And, you know, it's fun. And that's what I try to incorporate. Yeah. Um, the other cake I did this weekend for um, 501 Food Expo was a new cake. Um, the dragon wow. i call it dragon, dragon. Uh, yeah uh what i did with that um i had a banana and dragon fruit mousseline and then inside i have some caramelized cashews 
I have a giant fruit gel. Mm-hmm. I have flambé pineapples instead. And then I use um, a nut uh, tart base to, mm-hmm. for the bottom, you know. So every texture is different. You don't taste the same. And then the flavors, they work together to give you one whole experience, you know. And then you just take techniques that I've learned from other places and I applied it here to make it look um, pretty, you know. Is there anything that you are looking forward to recreate gourmet style? Uh, definitely. Um, one thing that I always look was looking at was Maha Blanca. I was thinking um, the same Maha thing. Blanca. Yes. Yeah. It's coconut and rice. Yeah. Um, do it a lot um, in Corzell or in Jaffe up in the north. Yeah. Um, I remember growing up, um, we used to visit a lot. Uh, my grandmother is there and we'd always pass a little spot in our drop uh, on the highway mm-hmm. and we stop mm-hmm. there and we buy Maha Blanca. And I, w- I always wondered how do they get this texture, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. It's like a well, they're very but- superstitious <laughs> about it. I got to tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, one, one day I tried it with my aunt and she told me if she told me I was mixing it too hard that it won't come out. So and- many rules. Yeah. <laughs> Who can touch it? Who can't touch it? How much really? you stir it <laughs> to get that yeah. perfect consistency? <laughs> yes, I, I, I yeah. think I need some training before I try to <laughs> So that's definitely one of those but, that, uh, that, that, you're, that you're trying to get a grip of. Yeah, that's something I want to learn, um, work on, try to incorporate in my cake, you know. Yeah. Um, that, this is carrot cake. Um, this is one of the first cakes I started with. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's, see, it, that's what I'm telling you. It's like what we're used to eating, but it's not, you're not making it the same. You're doing it at a different a level. So, Einar, yeah. uh, tell, tell me, one of the things that stand out for me, especially over what you've mentioned, is the fact that uh, you're very good friends with Sha- uh, Chef Sean Quillen. I don't know who that is Sean friend. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you, t- you, t- you also mentioned that, uh, you know, he taught you to incorporate a lot of Belizean, uh, Belizean stuff into what you do, Belizean um, uh, ingredients. How is that yeah. working for you and, and, and how do you like working along with what you've got here locally? Um, well, that's, it, you know, COVID, um, it locked down our borders, you know, you don't have um, strawberries, you don't have berries. So you have to look to see how, how can yeah. I design my cakes, you know, how go. How can I do it with locally sourced products? And honestly, it hasn't been much of an obstacle for me because, you know, Belize, we have our own pineapple. We have bananas yeah. here. We have, we have land, you know. So I don't see it as a challenge. You know, this is my apple tart, um, tart tatin. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know what Sean does and what Sean has, like, passed down to the, to the future generation is, mm-hmm. We don't have to copy anybody from abroad, you know. We can be our own selves and still um, attain that level of standard, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the things mm-hmm. I haven't seen in a in a pastry shop are um, that are uh, uh, culturally made stuff, and of course with Garifuna you've got the dani, uh, which is of course a pastry, and you've got the um, you've got uh, in with the Maya you've got the thing this thing called chokwa, chokwa. which is yes, I, I really like chokwa, I really like dani. And so, w- would you be able to find, you know, do you think along the lines of these things? And I think it, I think it, it's a great no, selling I think, point. Yeah. I know, I think it's a great selling point. Do you think about it? What, what are your thoughts? Definitely, um, that's what I want to do in the future, you know. Um, I want, when, when a tourist comes to Belize, they don't want to taste um, a Paris breast. Regular you know, cake or, in yeah. France. Strawberry you know, shortcake. Um, yeah, yeah. It, those, those stuff... Um, they get that over there, you know, yeah. and I, I can't compete with that because I'll never have um, the perfect French pastry, you know, because I'm not I'm not French. I'm not in France. <laughs> you know, I don't have the products. But what I could offer them is something Belizean, you know, yeah. something um, similar to it, but with Belizean flavors, you know. And like you said, John, um, maybe one day I take a trip down south, um, try to learn some yeah. some pastries from there, you know, yeah. and recreate it into my own version. Uh, actually, one thing that I want that I've been looking for for the past months is to make a black ricotta ice cream. Um, Ooh. Black ricotta ice cream. Okay. Yeah, I love the color of it, you know, um, the, the taste, you know, how well it would pair with cream, um, with milk, you know, and is that, I always have to look for creative. Oh, this is my oh, dress. I mean, I think that's so exciting. I think <laughs> yeah. that's what, what, what really interests me about your pastries. Um, it's 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 what we know but just on a different level so um you spoke of you know you won't have the best access to strawberries you can only take what you can get but we have so many wonderful fruits 
Uh, have you been able to, to venture off mango season? Yeah. Uh, it's like almost over. Um, I know a lot of people go crazy over crabo. Uh, have you looked at, at uh, some of the seasonal fruits and think of what you can do with them uh, using your own creativity? Yeah, um, mango season, I actually took advantage of that. Um, I had a cake called Tropical. I, I have a cake called Tropical Wave. Um, it's, I call it that because of the design I gave it. Um, yeah. It looks like a wave. Uh, it has coconut mousse. It has a mango jam in the middle. It has a lime insert yeah. and a mint sponge cake, you know? So all that flavor you're getting there is like tropical flavors. And yeah. that's where the whole idea came from. You know, I got some help on the name and the taste. And you know, it's, you see it right here and this is the- Oh, and it's beautiful. Wow. Indeed. Yeah. And our, um, there must be something that someone tastes, someone would taste and say, this is definitely from, um, from uh, Blue Belize. What, what are you most known for in your pastry shop? I, th I think what I blew up with was um, carrot cake. You know, one weekend I told my sister, you know, I, I'm going to make carrot cake to sell, you know. Yeah. Um, we started with eight orders. Suddenly it just blew up. You know, people are calling me and texting me, you know, I need a carrot cake. So I feel like that's, that's what I started with and that's what I'm most known for. And then after that, I started venturing off to show people, you know, I can do other stuff, you know. I can do stuff that I've learned from abroad yeah. and, you know, without sacrificing flavors. Like a cheesecake I did um, for Father's Day, I incorporated uh, molasses pastry cream. Whoa. Um, something that, yeah. something com completely different, you know. Um, I went to Natural Trace one day and I, I saw molasses, I saw cocoa nibs. I, and I said, you know what, I'll make something with this. I'll make it work. And people, people loved it, you know. Yeah. And so how about chocolate. this? If I have a favorite ingredient, I say to you, Einar, this is my favorite fruit for right now. Can you make something with it? You're up for the challenge. Always up for the challenge, you know. That I don't. I don't tell people. Um, I'll give me a cake, and I tell them, give. Tell me what you like. You know, if you like yeah. coffee, chocolate, and strawberry, or something together. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to sketch it in my notebook first. I'm going to send it back to you and I tell you what I have in mind, you know. Yeah. And if you if you like it, then I'll go through it. If you don't, uh, yeah. I'll look how to change it. And that's what I do, you know, because I don't like to limit myself to what I can do. I always try to think outside of the box and try to incorporate new flavors, you know. Nice. That's fantastic. So, Aina, what, what what's next for you? I mean, you know, this, this uh, Blue Belize have been blowing up. People like what you do. And I'm sure you're not, you're not complacent. You're not that type of guy. You're always trying to find new things uh, and incorporate new things to make things even better for you. So what's next for you? Um, well, right now, I just want to continue working hard, you know, getting my name out there, showing people that, you know, pastry is something different. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not like, it's on the same standard as food, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not something that's sweet, you know. It's, I, I want to give people an experience. And down the road, I want to have a pastry boutique, mm -hmm. um, something like Belize Chocolate Company has with their chocolate that, you know, we walk inside and you see like everything in glasses and pretty stuff, you know. Yeah. And speaking about Belize Chocolate Company, those guys, um, they really helped me a lot with everything because everything, all the cakes I do contains chocolate, which is made here in Belize. Wow. Um, they source my chocolate, you know, they have... 70% chocolate, 45% chocolate, white chocolate, cocoa butter, cocoa and nibs, you know, cocoa. Um, that chocolate everything. cake, I mean, yeah, yeah, this I needed to see chocolate. it sliced, but just from the outside. <laughs> yeah, that was... it has five textures of chocolate, so wow. that's why I call it textures of chocolate. Yeah. Wow. So um, just to be clear, because you don't actually have a store. You're doing orders. You're doing special orders online. You're primarily on Instagram oh, okay. under the name Blue Belize. Why blue? Yeah. And we're not taking, um, talking B-L-U-E, the color. It's B-L-E-U. No, -E <laughs> um, the name is kind of funny why it came up. Uh -huh. um, it was my first year of college. Uh, I'm still a student. You know, I'm, I'm finishing up my last semester at um and all my have been married in Mexico. Yeah. And my first year, um, my girl, me and my girlfriend at the time, where so I, I told her, you know what, I'm gonna make a pastry page. You know, I'm gonna put up my work there. And we started, we started thinking of things. And 
you know, at the end, I said, you know, I want something with Belize, and my school is my school is Le Cordon Bleu, Mayab. So I said, why can't I just incorporate blue? You know, because of the rivers, um, the nature, and everything. Yeah. So we, we we agreed on that, and to make it a little bit different, we incorporated blue in French B L E U. It's blue Belize, you know. So. Um, <laughs> That, so when you when you tell people blue Belize, you have to make sure you spell it for them. Correct. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> they won't yeah. find you. <laughs> yeah. Some people ask me if, um, if I'm a PUP enthusiast. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's why I said I wanted to ask you the yeah, question. I, I figured it had to do with uh, French. Yeah, it has to do with the French um, term. And, all right. And just uh, before we close off, you do have uh, your page and, and you occasionally have giveaways as well. Um, and people can make uh, special orders. Yes. Uh, make a, contact me at Blue Belize, B L E U Belize, on Instagram. Um, over there, I have my email and my number. Um, you can always call me. I'm always up to listening to people's requests, you know. Um, and I really enjoy what I do, you know. I'm grateful for everyone who supported me. Um, the, thanks to the Belizean public, I'm able to do what I love. and. I'm forever grateful for that. All right. Well, uh, you know, we, we know that you have to get to class, which yeah. is why we're rushing you <laughs> off. You won Pastry uh, Chef of the Year in, in Taste of Belize. It was 2018. 2018, yeah. 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 Um, and you're still finishing up school, so people get to sample your work while you're still going with school, while you're still going to school. And we really hope that uh, you have more people p giving you the challenge and john gave you danny and chokwa yeah, that's garfuna and, and, and maya. um <laughs> and yeah, maya yes and maya <laughs> and, and and i think you should definitely go after that maha blanca uh transformation definitely <laughs> down the road all right Einar. Right. thank you so Best much for chatting with us <laughs> Right, thank you too. All right. right. <laughs> it's always a nice time to chatting with our entrepreneurs. That was a feature. Would you give them pepitas next time? Yeah, pepitas. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of things that we could we could uh, we could incorporate here. And for the people who are, cra I don't like crabble, but I know people who love you crabble, like crabble. Love crabble. I love crabble. Oh, I do. Yeah. Ah. But I still think there's so much you could do with it. <laughs> I, I love, I'm, I didn't ask him one very important question, mm. whether or not he has a sweet tooth. Mm, that's true. Because... Clearly, I get excited because I have a very <laughs> sweet tooth. I um, know. <laughs> and, yeah, so it, it's just another Belizean um, really uh, being so creative and taking the talent that they have and making something special from it. I love when people take what we have um, at home. And, and use it as their source of inspiration. Definitely. So best of luck to Einar, of course, and you can find him on Instagram, B-L-E-U, Belize. Um, and check out his work and uh, make your orders there as well. Definitely. So it's always a nice time chit-chatting with entrepreneurs. And there we had it from Einar Marin. But we're about to take a break. Coming up next in our final segment for the morning, Belize Assembly for Persons with Diverse Abilities, or BAPTA. They're making a push. They're actually launching a website and they're actually petitioning for inclusion. They'll tell us more about it when we come back. <laughs> 